Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to make what is arguably the best cake ever. Stick around. In my family, this is called the North Carolina raw apple cake, and it was handed down to us from my wife's grandmother, I do believe. Uh, so it's been around for a long time. You may already know this cake as something else, but we're just going to go through it really quickly. What you'll need for this, and I'll put the recipe in the description so you've got everything you need. You don't have to write this down as we go along, but you're going to need some self-rising flour, some sugar, some canola or other type of vegetable oil, some Cairo syrup, baking soda, either chopped walnuts or chopped pecans. Now, I like the walnuts better, but depending on what you have, pecans work just fine, but they do need to be chopped and not halved. And then you're going to need three red delicious apples and one secret ingredient as well, which I forgot to get out earlier, which is whole buttermilk. So what we're going to do is we're going to start measuring this out. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get two cups of sugar. So we're going to measure out two cups here. Whatever I have left over will probably be donated to somebody in the family who bakes a lot or needs these kinds of things. So two cups of sugar, one and a half cups of canola oil. There's one cup, and there is a half a cup. And then I need three cups of self-rising flour. It does need to be self-rising. All-purpose flour will not work. So let's just measure out three cups here. Then I need to add three eggs. Oh, something else I forgot. You know, uh, Gordon Ramsay wouldn't make these mistakes. Now I'm using jumbo eggs because that's what I have. Normally I use extra large eggs, doesn't really matter. You just need three eggs. Eggs is what binds it all together and makes it cake. And uh, keeps it healthy. I need a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I need a teaspoon of vanilla. And then we're going to mix all of that up. And I just mix it up with a fork. You don't need a blender. You don't need any fancy schmancy things to make this cake. But we are going to blend this up so it's ready to take the walnuts and the apples. And I'll be honest with you, the two things that make this cake time consuming is the fact that it has to cook for 90 minutes but other than that it's cutting up the dang apples as my papa would say that's good enough for who it's for now we're going to need um two cups of the apples so let me come back to this measuring spoon now i bought two packages of uh of apples we're going to need two cups of the walnut there's one, there's two, and I've got just a little bit left. I'm just going to throw them in. Now, just for good measure, I'm going to mix all this together again. It'll just make it easier when I put the apples in. It is going to get very, very thick pretty soon. Um, so just expect that. It's going to be, it's going to be kind of packy. It's not going to be real fluid. That's what you want. And I know there are a lot of really, really good ways to slice apples. I don't know them. I just know what I do. So I cut them in half, and then I cut them in three or four, I mean four or five wedges. And I'm just going to start peeling, and we will fast forward through this bit right here because this is really boring. Now that we've got everything sliced and peeled, it's time to cut them up. But again, I'm not going to make you watch all this, but I will tell you that you do want to get rid of the seed part in the middle to make sure that you got rid of that. 
And anything that you have like this that's still pretty wide, just go ahead and cut that in half. And then I, I like to cut mine up maybe into quarter inch, three eighths inch pieces, a little less than a half an inch. I'm not measuring this. The recipe calls for three cups. I know from experience that three cups is three apples. And before I get too far along here, I am going to turn my oven to 300 degrees, which I should have done before I started. It is 300, not 350. It needs to cook slow. It needs to cook a long time. So I'm just gonna put all this together. I did try to stir this one time with a whisk. Hopeless. Um, you need a fork. If you have a, a big salad fork, that works even better. I have a typical nine by 13 inch pan. Spray that with some Pam. Now, if you wanted to do this the old-fashioned way by putting butter in there, sprinkle a little flour around, perfectly fine. And then we're just going to dip all of this into the pan. Turn this around here, maybe where you can see it on this other camera. Now, you'll see there's a lot left in here. I don't want to lose any of that. I will really get down to the heart of getting all of that delicious apple, sugary, cinnamony goodness out of that pan. And then I'm just going to spread it out. I want it to be pretty flat, fill up the corners. And then the trick is to clean the fork. So once my oven gets to 300 degrees, I'm going to put it in. It's going to go in there for 90 minutes. And we'll be back when it's time to pull it out. And that is exactly what you want it to look like. Now, what I'm going to do, you can feel this. It's, it's Again, it's pretty packy. My hands are clean. I'm going to let this sit for about... 30 minutes or so to cool off, and then I'm going to make the glaze. And then I'm going to wait until tomorrow morning to try a bite. I'm going to let that glaze sit there and soak in overnight. That is important to get this cake to tasting its absolute best. Okay, so we're going to start off. I'm going to turn this on to sort of a medium-high heat. Uh, one of the other ingredients that I forgot to mention, of course, is a stick of butter. Now, I have um, salted butter. That's what I typically use. You can use salted. You can use unsalted. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's already starting to melt a little bit because, you know, the pan was already kind of warm. It's going to need a cup of sugar. In case you didn't notice, there's a lot of sugar in this, in this cake. But, you know, in reality, I'm not really sure it would be cake if it didn't have a lot of sugar in it. So I'm going to put in a cup of sugar. Okay. And then the one thing that I buy that I only ever use for this recipe because I don't make buttermilk biscuits is buttermilk. Now, buy whole milk buttermilk. Don't buy the low-fat crap. That does not No, No, we're not worried about fat. I'm going to need a half a cup here. There is a half a cup of buttermilk. And I need a teaspoon of baking soda. It's going to bubble up, froth up uh, for a little while while it is um, boiling. And then I need a tablespoon of Cairo syrup. But before I do that, let's, let's put in the teaspoon of vanilla. And again, I've got the... Uh, Got the recipe linked in the description, so you don't have to write any of this down. It's all there, including all the times you need. So the buttermilk and the Cairo, I'm going to have a lot of that left over. Now, the buttermilk is going to expire long before I'm going to need it for another cake because I have to make this at Thanksgiving and I have to make this at Christmas. So a lot of the other ingredients I can still use. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of Cairo. Just going to kind of stir this around. Well, stir it around maybe a little less than that. 
once it starts to boil, we're going to stir this continually. We're not going to let it out of our sight. And I'm going to turn the timer to five minutes. But I'm not going to start it until it starts boiling. And, and it's going to turn a beautiful golden color as we get a little closer to being done. And I'm going to turn the timer on now. And then I'll try to stay quiet for the next five minutes. So you can see um, at this point, it's starting to froth up. It's starting to rise up in the pan a little bit. If it gets a little too high, you might need to pick the pan up just a little off the heat, let it settle back down again. But we're just going to keep stirring it. I've got another four minutes to go. All right, so we're down to less than a minute, and you can see it's starting to turn that beautiful golden color. It's starting to settle down. It's not uh, frothing up anymore, and it's just going to continue turning into this beautiful, beautiful glaze. Everything happens really fast here at the end, so keep an eye on it. Okay, so you can see, I think, in this, I'll get it over here a little bit. That is a beautiful, beautiful golden color. I'm just going to set this over here. All right, now, this pan is um, just a little more shallow than a regular pan would be if I were using my regular baking dish. So I'm just going to turn the edges up a little bit to make sure that I don't lose any of this wonderful goodness here. And I'm just going to... Pour this over the cake. I want to make sure that I have, I'm not going to pour it too fast because I don't want to get, I don't want all of it to get gone before I'm done. I want to make sure that I have covered every single wonderful morsel. Missed a little bit down here, so I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. You'll see I've got a little bit of an indentation right here in the middle, so it's kind of puddling up on me. That's to be expected. Don't worry about it. I'm going to leave this overnight because that glaze is just going to soak right down into every wonderful edible bite of this cake. So I'm going to cover it with some foil. I'm going to let it sit. I'm not going to touch it. And then in the morning, when I'm having my coffee, we'll cut it open and see what it looks like. Well, here we are, 5 o'clock in the morning. The cake has been hermetically sealed overnight <laughs> behind this foil. I've not looked at it. I have no idea what it looks like at this point. So let's do the great unveiling here. And I think you will agree that this has just turned into a thing of beauty. But as they say, the proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the proof is in the cake. So I'm going to cut a small piece. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this cake is that it will fall apart very easily. So don't be surprised. And I don't have a cake spatula, so you know, I just have this little bit of a knife here. Bring this over here where my second camera can find it. And this is what I'm talking about. Make sure I get a walnut in this bite. Is it the best cake ever? Yes. I'm going to cut a little bit of a slice off here for my mom because she loves this cake. And then I'm donating it to my daughter's office because I have to get it out of my house. But if you want to wow your family at a get-together, a holiday, especially the fall holidays where apple and, you know, cinnamon, those kinds of things are big, well, you cannot do any better than the North Carolina raw apple cake. 
Let me know in the comments if you make one and what you think.